Opposite from here in Doha, Qatar at the World Cup, Richard Keyes and Andy Gray were the famous faces of Sky Sports Premier League coverage for a generation. As English football became a global sensation, they became household names. But they lost it all in a notorious scandal over sexist comments made off air about a female assistant referee, and they've since moved their careers and their lives to here in Qatar. I spoke exclusively to them earlier in their first UK TV interview in a decade since it all went down. Why did you say yes to me? Well, it's quite simple. You're Piers well, Morgan, you're the governor. Yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of like your style, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, uh, I think, would it be Marmite? Piers' style? Very much, <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. The, and I don't the, like the, Marmite, but I quite <laughs> like your style. So we, we had a chat, and it wasn't, as you, you might suspect, it wasn't a done deal mm. when we were asked, but I kind of said to Richard, I'd, I'd like to talk to Piers. We are, as my great friend, late, great Ray Wilkins would say, we are a tad, or were a tad bruised. Yeah. And so therefore we withdrew entirely um, from, from engaging with the British media. Um, and, and we've largely concentrated on the opportunity that was afforded to us here. Uh, we've had an absolute ball for a decade. Um, the other thing that I thought you, you were very fair about, Piers, was your attitude towards this World Cup, the country, friends that we've made mm -hmm. in the time that we've been here. Just to start with the fact the World Cup's here. Mm -hmm. You guys have lived here for the last decade. Mm -hmm. What do you make of the way that, particularly in the UK, there's been this narrative about Qatar, <laughs> they shouldn't have the World Cup, <laughs> it was one with corruption, there are all these problems with LGBT rights, uh, migrant workers. Mm -hmm. but to me, these are all legitimate concerns. Mm -hmm. Agreed. But I also think there's been a lot of hypocrisy. I don't remember this outcry as, as intense as it's been in for such a long time around Russia no. four years ago. I don't. And that was four years after they invaded Crimea, right? And with exactly the same record about human rights when it comes to LBGTQ uh, LGBT rights. and so on and so on. So I, I do feel there's a lot of hypocrisy. There's a war raging in Yemen. Right. Um, but, but my, my view on, uh, yes, there is a lot of hypocrisy. Um, I, I, none of us condone what, what Putin did, has done, and, and would wish to do as far as his excursion into the Ukraine is concerned. But, but I think that resonated more in Europe because white faces were being seen in, in distressing situations. If the colour of the face is different, it doesn't quite resonate to the same degree. And as as fair, unfortunate as that is, mm -hmm. it's true. So here, here we've had different wars at different times that we, we've had to come to terms with, and they haven't necessarily made a, a line of copy in the UK. So yeah, all of the things that have been mentioned, we understand, mm -hmm. and I think the country here more than any in this part of the world understands. But I think it was you that made the point when I was listening the other week. If you accept the principle that a World Cup is coming to the Middle East, and it should, mm. where are you going to play it if not Qatar? Right. And by the way, for the same reason, do you then go and play it in Africa, which has many of the same issues? Do you go to India? Do you go to China? I mean, what about, I just... four, what about four years from now in America? Right, you well, mentioned see, that in your well, I made a point. I've lived in, yes. I, listen, I love America. Yeah. I've lived there on and off for nearly 20 years. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't agree with some of their laws, yes. gun laws, some of their state laws about abortion yes. now. Um, I wonder if people will take the high moral ground about America's laws. I doubt they will with the same ferocity I, they I have I don't here. think it'll get a mention, Piers, because, again, it, you, I, I refer you back to what I just said about... Listen, a lot of what the criticism levelled at this country has, has bordered, if not has been racist. Yes, it, it has been shocking. Please let me tell you about You say overnight, and, and, and in all honesty, this country I live in now, there's no resemblance to the one I moved into 10 years ago. In what way? And, and the way it has changed, its, its views, its laws, um, uh, the kafala that used to be in here that restricted people, I think, from travelling and whatever, mm. that's, that's all been gone. They're modifying everything in that respect, and they are trying to move on. But as you said, they're doing it slowly. Mm. And maybe that's not to everyone's satisfaction. Maybe it's too slow. If you were being critical, one. what would you say? What would be your biggest criticism? Well, I'd... I think all of the issues that you've mentioned... Could do another couple of golf courses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All of those factors should be taken as seriously as they have yes. been. But you can't use them to consistently, whilst change is taking place, at, a, at, at the pace of the Qatari government. And again, you shouldn't be dictated to by, by the West and, and, and whatever we believe to be 
uh, valuable and important in life. You know, you, you have to follow this. No, it, it's been a slow process, perhaps in some areas too slow, mm -hmm. but progress has been made virtually every day since we came here. And Andy's right, it's a totally different country to the one we moved to, and it's a very enjoyable place to, to well, enjoy. Let's, let's get to why you came here, right? So the last time many people would have seen you, if they don't watch your, your commentaries now, would have been when you were riding unbelievably high at Sky, Premier League was on fire, you guys were the front men for it, life was good, you were superstars really of British TV, especially in football, and then bang. Do you recognise any of that? Yeah, just me. <laughs> 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 I used to watch you guys and love you guys, right? You know, uh, you're an integral part of my football watching life. Yeah. And then bang. Do you regret saying the things you said, albeit they were said private? Of course. Uh, listen, it, 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 yes. Um, I questioned whether a young lady from Coventry, my hometown, uh, would know the offside law mm. as she made her debut. Um, the female linesman. Yeah. 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 Um, I, on air, because I was not sure who her father was, actually on air as we went to the kickoff, said, and we also have a female mm. assistant, we call them these days. Um, good luck to her, Sean. I, I don't know, I may have gone to school with her dad. She's from my manor, so all the very best to her. She made a number of errors first half that I was insistent we didn't show, nor did we. She got one absolutely spot on, uh, the goal that was scored uh, against Liverpool, I believe. When I spoke to her the following day, she was great. She said, hey, come on. Now... You rang her to apologise? Yes, of course. And she accepted the apology? She more than accepted more it. Than. She said, I expected this last week. It's just a bit of fun. Come on, Keezy. It, I, that, that, I'd never really come across that word banter. She said, oh, come on, it's just banter. And, and that, I suppose, stuck in my mind. And I said, no, no, no. I said, Sean, this is really serious now. It's got a life of its own. I, I have to make this an official apology mm. on behalf of myself and Andy, who's in commentary now. She went, well, right, OK. I'm, I'm waiting, so I did. And then she went, oh, by the way, a couple of things first half that you didn't show. Thank goodness for that. Thank you. I said, well, we're not in that business. You know, so, yes, in isolation, those... those my questioning whether she knew the offside mm. law was, was you know, unacceptable. Without anybody, honestly, in sports television at the time, very few people would survive all their private conversations. Oh being made public. Okay. I don't think that's that's not because everyone's awful. It's because mm -hmm. the banter that you alluded to earlier was very prevalent. Mm -hmm. I hate, by the way, I hate that word. And I'd never, as I said, I'd never used it. But Sean said to me, I expected it last week. Oh, come on, it was only banter. And I suppose that was in my head. And at the time when you're on the defensive, because you can't get your head around what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's an extraordinary place to be. You know, you, you've set the dogs on many in, 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 in a different role. Well, I've been on the receiving end. You've yeah, also yeah. been on the yeah. receiving end. So I've been end, yeah. poached to turn game. Yeah. So you, you, I, I know what it's like. It's a, it's a terrible it place is, yeah. to be. It's awful. It's awful. If you had your time again, yeah. would you have done anything different in the way you responded? Yes. What would you have done? I would have accepted quicker that what people were saying to me was, was uh, accurate, mm. and I would have understood sooner that, that what, what happened shouldn't have done. Um, but you... you, you you're not in that place. And, um, but I've said many times to friends, given the same circumstances again, of course I would have gone at things differently. But you, you also have to then factor in mental health, which I, 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 I think people too quickly dismiss, less so now than they have. For the first time in my life, I, I found myself in a very difficult place. I just I couldn't get my head around it, Piers. It, mm. it didn't at that time seem to be so significant to, to start the forest fire that was engulfing us. Alluded to the fact that you had suicidal mm -hmm. thoughts at one stage. Yeah, no, no, you're serious. Yeah, that's serious. I mean, you talked about it. I, I, I had a wonderful life. Uh, fortunate, lucky. Uh, I played 17 years as a footballer. It was glorious. Best, best years of my no, life. 15, Loved 15. You 17. can't, can't count the, the last two. two were about FA. I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, and then <laughs> went to work uh, in the sport I love. For a new broadcaster, it was about to revolutionise football in the way it did, and had 20 years there. So, I suddenly found myself in a really dark place. Um, the house surrounded by people. Uh, and I knew I had done something wrong, of course I did. But I couldn't compute it. And my head was gone, and if I hadn't been for my wife, I, I don't know what would happen. I really don't. Uh, Rachel was amazing. 
wonderful. You were really, you were that yeah. low? Yeah, I was close to going down the garden where I used to have a pool, a, a pond down at the garden with a little bottle and a few pills and I would, I would have nipped down. I was that bad one day. I was that bad. Yeah. But... I mean, that's so horrific. Hmm. People who know me will probably think, yeah, you're kidding. Because you're too... No, but I can see it in your, in your face yeah. now, even as you re think yeah. about it again. Horrible. It's a very emotional thing to, to, re yeah. to relive for you. Horrible. Horrible. I couldn't work it out. I knew I'd done wrong, but I thought, you know, for two weeks, I couldn't get out of the house. Um, mm. Just surrounded by press and TV cameras and crews. And... Uh, amazing. Weird. Really weird. Really weird. But we're through it now. I am through it now. And your family was what saved you? Yeah, Rachel and the kids and pals. You know, friends, people who... You learn who your friends are, peers, and things like that happens to you, and I, I think we both did, didn't we? Mm. We both learned. Did you and know how, how low Andy Yes, was? I was there too. Same? Oh. What, feeling suicidal? Oh, Piers. Really? You have no idea. You, it's, it's, you know, me, me, mental health... It, it, He's right. You can't explain. You look back now with a clear head and a clear, and you go, "What? Come on, what are, you, what are you thinking?" You know. But when you're in that place, and and he's right, you couldn't. The only I, I used to have to leave my house from the, from my back garden. I would walk to a local uh, nursery that was close by. I got in a taxi, and I flew out here actually because uh, Nasa Al Khalifi, uh, who I'd worked for earlier, 2008, and, and he wanted me to join then. And of course, I should have done. But I was too comfortable. I should have taken mm -hmm. his offer, but didn't. So he, he called and said, look, nobody's talking about it out here. Why don't you come out here? But then the heat got too much, and I felt I had to back away for us because it was going to bring too much attention to this country, and they didn't need to inherit our problems at that time. So, so we put it on a burner. So in, in effect, I lost two jobs. In, we, we lost yeah. two jobs in, in two weeks, um, one of them of our own volition. But no, it's a... It's Do you a, think it was wrong that you lost your jobs? Well, I, mean, I you talked about how it made you feel. Well, let me ask you. Can I ask you then? Can, yeah. I, can I turn that on you? Yeah. Because uh, I, I, I would like to know. Do you think it was wrong we lost our jobs? Well, it's interesting. You know, when I've looked at it all again, it feels to me like an overreaction by everybody because I think that you, you, you made fulsome apologies. I know Karen Brady, for example, who is one of the bosses at West Ham, and when one of her players got caught kicking a cat around, horrendous video came out, she said, everyone deserves second chance and forgiveness. And yet, I remember her reaction to when you two were sacked, and it was a different reaction. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt there was a real kind of uh, feeding frenzy to do you in, yeah. which, with hindsight now, looks like it was overdone. Have, have uh, the... But mainly because you didn't say this on air. And I do think that everybody, it, anyone who was, had all their private conversations, Put onto public domain. I'm not sure many people would survive it. They wouldn't survive it. I mean, you, you've been in more green rooms, probably. You can count and had conversations with guests off, off, off mic, and 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 if half half of the things that you talk about were run, it, the, the people would be horrified. Private conversations are what they what, why they're called a private conversation. Andy, who let you down most in the world of football that you would have expected to defend you when you look back? At that time, yeah, lots of people. I, I wouldn't want Are there any that stick in your mind? I wouldn't want to name, name too many of them. My, my real friends were there, mm -hmm. without a shadow of a doubt. And I knew, they, I knew who they were. Um, I mean, Andy Townsend, we've talked about Andy, he was one of my neighbours then. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there in the, in the kitchen one day, just head was all over the place. The next minute, <laughs> the gate's <laughs> opened brilliant. and this motorbike, <laughs> <laughs> a rider comes right down the drive, he's got an extra... He's got an extra helmet and he's under his arm. He comes screeching in and it's Andy. He takes the hat off. He's got that. And I'm like, what are you? Come on. I said, what? I'm getting you out of here. I said, no. No, you're not. And I was, I was, he said, yeah, yeah, come on. Put this helmet on. We'll get up to the gate and then we'll do a runner. Mm. I said, no, I can't. But that's the kind of friend that was there. But there, was, there were lots of people that I looked after, peers, in various ways and various things. That I never heard from, and I've never heard from probably in 20 years. And if have I had, you, I would tell you. Let me ask you. I mean, have you guys? I think every every bloke, right? We're all. How old are you now? If you don't mind me asking. I'm 50 next year. Yeah, yeah, 50. <laughs> I plus fat. How old are you guys? <laughs> I'm, I'm 65, please. And and I am 67 in two days. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm 57. I think every I think every bloke has probably gone through a little bit of reevaluation mm -hmm. 
in recent years about what is appropriate and not appropriate in terms of how you act, what, what you say. Mm. Have you guys, since what happened to you, have you gone through that process? Yes, yourself? and I sometimes yes. look at what you've yes. got to say on different matters and I think to myself, no, Piers, come on. Because if, if, if we are to find a balance, then we have to over-balance in one direction in order to, to get back to the middle. Because for too long, men have had everything their own way. Mm. And, and, and we're looking to try and find middle ground. And if We're not going to do that just by us. We, we, I, in my view, we've got to go here, and we have to accept a lot of the things that irritate you particularly <laughs> and drag them to the centre ground, and then we might find a better balance. Because I, I know the moment I announce I've done this interview, we all know what's going to happen. There'll be people on Twitter, why are you interviewing those sexist dinosaurs? Because dinosaurs ruled the world for about 300 million years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm really not You're proud to be a dinosaur. Very well, much I, I kind of Embrace stay, it, Piers. I kind of stay away from social media most of the time, Piers. I've, mm. I've, I've not been a fan of it. But for, for that, can, that kind of reason, I'm, I'm, I'm too, to old, those who think I'm too that, old to be To those who think up. that's what you are, because of what happened 10 years ago, what do you say to them? Talk to anyone who knows me. Really. I can't defend myself. It's easy to defend myself. You know, but... That would be wrong. People know me, uh, Piers. People who have been my friends and talked to my family. Anyone who knows me, ask them. And if, if they, they turn around and say to you, yeah, he's definitely a sexist, then I would be very, very surprised. Mm -hmm. So, I, I... That's it. If you were offered jobs again in the UK, would you go back? Um... My primary, my, my, I am deeply loyal to the company that I work for and with. Um, I think there is a process at which now I would be able to, yeah, engage, yes. Mm. Um, but I, I, there, there is no suggestion of that being the case. Um, but yeah, I, I, listen, I, <laughs> I, I find it extraordinary, honestly, mm -hmm. because in life things happen for a reason, I believe. I wouldn't wish upon any, but well, I, I might, one or two exceptions, uh, yeah. but I wouldn't wish on the majority um, what we went through. But I, as a result, have lived a, 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 a wonderful life here. I mean, I feel, and I might be completely wrong here, but just from the interview you gave to The Telegraph and from just things I've picked up, and even today, actually, that I, I think that maybe you've come to terms with what happened better in the sense that you're ready to sort of leave it. I feel with you, Richard, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, there's still a lot of anger about what happened. No, I, I just not... And resentment. No, I don't think that's necessarily true. I'm, I'm, I'm very comfortable at the place we're in. Mm. Um, but I, 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 will, I, I will always carry a little bit of anger in my back pocket. And mm. I don't think that's a bad thing. Mm. If, if, if that is to be used um, by way of motivation, mm. then, then I, I'm... Uh, very happy with that as well, but no, there are a number of. It's 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 instinct, Piers. It's 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 something that you would do. You mm. would want to know what happened. I can't. That's how my mind is. If you let bitterness eat you up, no, it's not bitterness. That in its way, I'm not bitter bitterness. I, yeah, I, I mean, how would you categorise? What I would you say feel? It, it it still is a, a back a back pocket yeah. full of anger. Yeah, yes. that's all. But when and, you think about it, it, it... Yeah, and, and, and I do for him, when I see my mate sat there, in, yeah. as distressed as he was talking about it, yeah. I feel protective, and then and then that stirs, you know, a, a little bit more of me to get on the front foot, and that's, that's how it's been. A couple of quick football questions, I mm. can't not ask you, given we're here at the World <laughs> Cup in your backyard, but can England win the World Cup? They can. They can. Will they? That's a different question. Isn't it? <laughs> They're capable. Yeah. What will it depend on? Well, all sorts of things. You, 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 Harry you're, Kane you're getting line. not losing Kane would be obviously a huge factor. He doesn't factor. look fit to me. No, no. his ankle looks no. dodgy. If it's not England, who do you fancy? Who do you think of the well, standard? One of my one of my favourites. A, a really strong. I, I thought Belgium would make a real impression here. I also think Portugal with yeah. my old buddy Cristiano. Do you think he was right to do the interview with me? No. Why? Not at this time of his career. I thought it was badly timed. I didn't think he needed to volunteer for the aggravation that it's brought him. Um, were I you, I would have said to him, listen, I, I'm very, very keen that you sit down and talk with me, but let's get you sorted out first, because we don't want to taint the legacy. We don't want you leaving Manchester United under a cloud, and there's no reason that you I should. should. Roy Keane left after a similar outburst on Man U TV, and he's revered Do you think he's tainted his, Not his at legacy? All, no. No. At all. No. I don't think a few months' problems with Eric Ten Hag mm -hmm. and the coach he had never heard of before that ran ring. I don't think it's going to make any difference to okay. the legacy of Ronaldo. So you think in time Manchester United fans will... Yeah, 
Let's forgive. He yeah. remains one of the greatest players they've ever had. And in terms of what if him, they what if they have a view of Ronaldo the same as you've just suggested? Public do still of us. <laughs> It's going to be a long time. Yeah, always, <laughs> you know what Cristiano said to me? You're never going to please everybody, so you may as well be true to yourself. That's true. Anyway, okay. guys. Well, you see what we've I've done We're now interviewing you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's great, it's great to see you. And, it's great to see you. Enjoy in your own, in your own, uh, Enjoy in your own home. I've enjoyed my time here, and I'm glad you guys have enjoyed it. And I hope this interview goes away to, you know, well, making I, I, people realise what you've been through and Well, end as we start up, Piers, it is kind of you to offer the invitation yeah. for us to come and talk to you. And I know one of your objectives when you took this job was to uncancel people. Mm. And if you've played we a role... Cancel. We oh, well, I think so, <laughs> don't you? I if, don't think you should be. I don't think almost anyone should be irrevocably cancelled. <laughs> Agreed. I'm not sure what more you can do than show remorse, say you wish you hadn't said those things, but they were said privately. A lot of other people were saying similar stuff at the time. I heard them. Right, in some cases, right, in the football world. And I think that the reaction was overdone. You're Should very be. kind to have Thanks given us this opportunity. Good to see Thank you. you. Thank you. Come you on, England. You going for a swim? I might. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. you